Hey guys, so I just created a Patreon page and if you like what I do on YouTube and you would like to support my channel, support me, then please support my Patreon page and make a pledge of any amount and I would really appreciate it. I don't really have any exclusive content ideas for that platform at the moment but if you do have any then do let me know. Alright, so today's video is going to be on my favourite and disappointing product discoveries for the month of February and I do have a bunch of exciting things to show you guys because these are things that aren't really talked about so I can't wait to share them with you. But I'm first going to start off with something disappointing that I tried out for the month of Feb and this is the Glam Glow Super Mud Clearing Treatment Mask. This is a sample size that I received from Sephora and honestly I find this to be a pretty normal charcoal mask and I've heard a lot about Glam Glow and I know a lot of people regard this as their holy grail mask but as an all over face mask or an overnight spot treatment I find these to be pretty normal and it's not really a miracle worker or anything. I've been using this for two to three weeks and yeah I think it just works normally to clear up my skin. I mean it does have a stinging sensation when I put it on and that may just be a sign of skin irritation but I like to think of it as the mask doing some work on my skin and it does form some oil spots on your pores and all so I don't know if that is supposed to show that the mask is drawing out oil from your skin. But I do know that these masks are pretty pricey and for the price point, I just do not find them to be mind-blowing at all. Next, I have two powder blushes from Colourpop. This is in the shade Weirdo and Bear Hopping and I really love these tones. I love dusty pinks and nude tone blushes and I think these look great as an everyday natural kind of look for blush. And I'm not really sure why the pressed powder products, the blushes, bronzers and highlighters weren't sent out as PR from Colourpop so no one really talks about these products and you do not have a ton of swatches of them online but if you watch the Colourpop Instagram stories you would know that Romcom seems to be their favourite press powder blush to use and personally I prefer these dusty tones so I'm not wearing any blush right now and I think I should put these on my face so that you can see how they look like so Weirdo is a dusty pink shade that would look great on fair skin as well as dark skin tones and I think this just looks really really pretty. Bear Hopping is a warm nude shade but might not work so well on dark skin tones. It is very similar to the blush in the Double Play palette which I absolutely love. These apply pretty sheer as compared to the pigmentation that we know Colourpop to be of but I kind of prefer it this way because I do not look like an instant clown and it's very easy for blush and bronzers to go wrong. So I do prefer this and I have got Weirdo on this side and Bear Hopping on this side. It looks very similar but Bear Hopping should have a more orangey tone to it. Also the pans of these are huge. I think you get 6.5 grams of product and they only cost for $7 for just the pan and $8 for the pan and the compact. So I think it is really worth picking this item up from Colourpop. And next I have the Shop Hush Aura and Retro Love palettes to recommend. These are definitely my favourites from the bunch that I hauled from Shop Hush. I've done dedicated video reviews on these two palettes so if you are interested in checking out swatches, and my try-ons for these palettes then do check out my videos for them. The shadows in here are really really pigmented, unique and they blend out very nicely. I do prefer the Aura palette over the Retro Love palette because the formula is slightly better and I like the colour scheme a lot more too and I am so in love with the look I created with the Aura palette. My next item is also a favourite. This is the Pure Fully Charged Mascara and it's powered by magnetic technology. So I'm very picky when it comes to mascaras because a lot of mascaras end up smudging on my lower lash line and it's not cute. So I really look for a mascara that can last me the entire day without smudging or flaking off and this mascara definitely met all of my needs. It doesn't really lengthen and volumize your lashes a lot but it does coat each individual lash nicely to accentuate your lashes and give them a nice clean look. Also if you have like a love-hate relationship with waterproof mascaras because they last so long but they're so difficult to remove then you will like these as well because 
They can last the entire day without smudging or flaking and then they remove easily with micellar water. Alright, this next item is what I am most excited to share. So these are the Pure Quick Pro Glitters and they are liquid eyeshadows. They come in these adorable tiny tubes and I think I need to do a dedicated video for these. So you do get 5.5ml of product which is like a decent amount comparable to other brands and these are by far the best liquid eyeshadows that I've ever tried. And I'm talking Stila, Colourpop, J-Cat, Holika Holika, Urban Decay. I've done videos on some of these brands that I've just mentioned. And this formula trumps all of them. So my favourite part about these is that they blend out so seamlessly and flawlessly. It does not remove product as you blend it out. So you do not end up with patchiness or crustiness or any flaking off. And they are super pigmented. So even a makeup beginner can blend these out and use these with ease. I'm wearing the shade Namaste on my eyelids today and I'm going to insert a short application clip so that you can see how easy these are to blend from wet to dry and I had no issues with the product lifting or with like any patchy areas or with crustiness so these are really really flawless and I cannot recommend these enough for liquid eyeshadows. The next two items are highlighters so this is the Ofra Everglow highlighter from the Nikki Tutorials collab. I like it that it has three shades for you to mix and match to get your desired highlighter shade. And this is the Wet n Wild Mega Glow Highlighting Powder. I have it in the shade Precious Petals. I think this shade complements my skin tone perfectly. It is like the perfect highlight shade for my skin tone. These highlighters are really metallic and blinding and a little goes a long way with them to get like a really reflective sheen on your cheekbones without accentuating any texture and they are a favourite among makeup lovers and beauty bloggers so I finally got the chance to try them out. If you're curious to know how these highlighters would look on your skin, like how much sheen or reflectiveness they have and you own the Super Shock Cheek product from Colourpop in Flexitarian, then you can just layer Flexitarian on your cheekbones and Flexitarian is really really metallic so it gives a very blinding glow and it is sort of similar to the Ofra highlighter. The Ofra highlighter is really really reflective and metallic more so than the Wet n Wild one. The Wet n Wild one has got more of a subtle finish to it. It is still pretty metallic but you know if you do not want it to be too intense like the Ofra one, the Wet n Wild one is a good alternative. And finally, the last product is the Etude House Two-Tone Treatment Hair Color. I can't decide if this is a favorite or disappointing product because as a hair color, this is definitely disappointing. I mean, I can't really blame the product since I have such dark hair, but as a treatment product, it is really, really good and it's a favorite for that. My natural hair color is dark brown with ashy tones and I can see the yellowy green tones to it under my bathroom lighting. So this kind of tinted my hair to be a more of a berry red brown situation and I only did my hair ends. So I'm not sure if you can see it on camera because it's not super obvious in person. I can see it under certain angles and lighting conditions. And yeah, it lasts about like four washes before fading out, but it definitely leaves my hair feeling super soft and it detangles my hair so my hair is much tamer right now. I have been putting my hair up in a ponytail for my videos because I know my hair looks like a mess usually and this really helps to keep my hair looking manageable and soft. So that is something I really like about this product. If you have lighter hair, you would have more luck in getting the colour over here on the tube. But for me, I'm not going to bleach my hair, so I guess I have to live with this result. I mean, it's it's still cute for dark hair. So as a hair mask treatment, I definitely really, really like it. And you can use it as a hair mask treatment if this product ends up failing for you. But for hair color, I wouldn't really recommend for dark hair if you are expecting it to change, like really change the color of your hair. Alright, so those are all of the new products that I tried out for the month of February. I hope you guys found this video useful and do let me know what you think about any of these items in the comments below. And yeah, thanks for tuning in with me this time and I'll see you guys soon in my next video. Bye bye!